To-do list convenience is the death of productivity. It's never been easier to add a task, a few taps and it's on your list. But that convenience is actually the problem. When adding a task only takes one second, you stop asking the most important question. Is this even a task worth doing? So in this video, I'll go through my task management system that forces you to think. One that takes about 10 seconds to add a new task, so 10 times longer than the usual way. But that will save you hours every single week by filtering out the pointless tasks that don't need doing. Because when every idea, impulse, or thought becomes a to-do list instantly, you don't get more productive, you just get busier. So in this video, I'll show you the different questions that you want to ask yourself for every single task that ends up on your to-do list. So before we get to my task management system with the questions that I ask myself, I first wanted to quickly introduce you to Notion. This here is Notion. There are a few things you need to know. The first one here is that you can do to-do lists and create pages inside of Notion. So to-do lists look like normal to-do lists, task one, task two. And pages can sit inside of pages. So if I call this project one, that page is sitting within this page. So let's call this my tasks page, for example. And this here is a pretty standard way that people add tasks into Notion or they add projects into Notion. And I've also seen people do it like this, where they have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they add tasks like this, task three, task four. And this way they can at least move the tasks to the specific day they'll do it. But this is text, not data. And that's the problem. And to fix that, instead, we have to start using this thing called databases. Now, databases might seem scary to people who haven't used it before, but by adding our tasks here, so let's call this task five, and using different properties, such as the number property, select property, date property, etc., we can start to build systems. And that's what Notion is all about. This stuff here is level one Notion and using databases is level 10 Notion. So which properties do we want to add? What are the questions we want to ask ourselves before we do a task? Let's go through that. I'll be using headquarters, which is my premium Notion template. But of course, you can add these questions into your own workspace if you prefer. But if you are interested in headquarters, there's a link in the description. So I'll click here on new page and I'll just add some fake tasks. The first set of questions here is the importance and urgency. So I have here important, not important and move the needle. I'll talk about move the needle later. And then here we have urgent, not urgent and habit. So let's just say this is not important and this is not urgent. Now let's say task two here is important, but it's not urgent. As you can see, it jumps up in the queue. So task two is now sitting above task one. Let's do another example where task three here is not important, but it is urgent. As you can see, it jumps up above task two. That's because we want to do urgent tasks before we do important ones. And then for task four here, let's say it's important and it's urgent. As you can see, it jumps up to the top of this list. Now I built this using a sorting system. So this sort here is saying sort by urgency and importance and date as well. If there are any tasks that have the same date associated with them. So now when I'm working through my task list, I'll work from the top of the task list. We are not just randomly doing tasks like you're probably currently doing. Why are you prioritizing this task one when task four here is important and urgent? If you don't want to do the importance and urgency, another option you could do is a simple number property from one to 10. But however you want to set this up, you need a ranking system. The next question is actually breaking a belief to do with calendars. So all of these tasks here have this date next to it. So this is a simple date property here. And what you want to do is literally say when you're going to do this task. So I'll say here, all of these on the fifth, just as an example. See, the belief that most people have is that we have a task list and we have a calendar and they treat them as separate things. But your tasks are the same as events. Events just have a date associated with them. But you want to see these in the same place because A, you don't have to check now two different workspaces. Instead, you just check your calendar because your tasks have been scheduled for when you'll do them. And B, this allows you to time block, also known as time boxing or daily scheduling. And I can do that up here. So here you can see this time property. Now this here is a very simple text field where I can write in the time here. If you use Notion Calendar, you can also schedule in there very efficiently. I personally use Notion Calendar for doing that. If you want to learn how to use Notion Calendar, I'll put a link in the description. So here I can now plan out my day. That's why the second question is, when am I doing this task? Now the problem that people fall into is that they try to put in too many tasks in their day. They think I can do all of this stuff here today. The problem is people just can't handle more than four hours of full cognitive effort per day. And that's why the third question I like to ask myself is what state of mind is required for me to do this task? So we have flow state tasks. You probably need about two hours for these. We have quick tasks, which take under five minutes. We have easy tasks, which aren't cognitively demanding. You may need up to an hour to do these. And then we have personal tasks like seeing a friend. Now because of flow tasks, takes about two hours and our brain can only handle four hours of this work, we'll only have two flow tasks per day. 
and that is my flow rule. So let's just say hypothetically, these three here are flow, this is easy, let's say this is quick, this is flow, and then this is personal. What I'm doing here now is breaking my productivity rule. I have too many flow tasks. So this task two and task six, I'm going to move to the next day. So I'll simply move this here and move that there. And that's why I ask myself, how much cognitive demand does this task require? The next things I fill out are the bucket and the project. So let's just say these here are to do with business. And then let's say this one here is a relationship. Now, the next question here is which project does this relate to? And we're filling this out because we want to know, is this a task even worth doing? Because if this task one here isn't working towards a specific project, why are we even doing it? See, people think goals and projects are different, but they're the same thing. If you have a goal of running a marathon, that's just a project. If you have a goal of starting an Etsy store, that is just a project. And that project has the tasks that are involved in it. So if this hypothetical task one here doesn't have a project associated with it, why am I even doing it? And the next question here I've been told is a bit pedantic, but it is this time tracking feature. So I'll just fill out some random numbers here. So if I tick in these tasks here like that, and if I scroll down, I can go to this time tracking page here. And if I open this up, I can see my time broken down by project and time broken down by bucket. This helps me to know where is my time going? Because if I can see I've only spent 120 minutes, AKA two hours on total on my relationship, that's probably not very good. Or if I can see in total, I've spent 5.5 hours on my business, I can reassess, is that enough time? And with projects here, I can know exactly how much time am I spending per project because your to-do list is your day. So it's useful to know where is your time going? Now, like I previewed at the start here, one of these options here is move the needle. The reason I have this is to answer the question, are the tasks that I'm doing actually getting me results. So let's just say here, this task four moved the needle as an example. And you probably won't know that day. So what I've done is actually set up a weekly review system, which automatically brings in all the tasks that you completed that week. And here you can go through all the tasks and say the ones that moved the needle. Now, if you do this once a week or once a month and just go through all of your tasks, you can open up this move the needle page and see all of the different tasks that you've done that have moved the needle. And you'll answer, are these tasks getting me results? Because if you're spending your time on tasks that don't move the needle and you keep doing similar tasks, why would you expect a different result? But if you have a list of tasks that have moved the needle, you know, hey, I should probably do similar tasks in the future. So now with these questions, we can implement one of the best productivity hacks, deleting tasks. Oh, okay, this one here is not important and not urgent. Why would you even bother doing it? Simply delete that task. This task here doesn't have a project associated with it. I'm not working towards anything. Then why would I do it? Now I understand adding a task here, so task 10, and filling out the importance, the urgency, the state, the bucket, and project. May take about 10 seconds. How annoying. But you know what's going to happen? You're going to save a lot of time because you're not wasting your time on tasks that don't matter. If you found Headquarters useful and you want to download this template, there's a link in the description or click on this video here to see the full tour. Thanks for watching.